Good morning, everyone. Uh, welcome to the first lecture under module eight. Uh, if we just recollect our discussion in the previous lecture, so we discuss about the uh, classification of biogas plants. Then, after that, we discuss about the different parameters which affect the biogas production in the digester, followed by the raw materials availability and the biogas yield from the specific raw materials. So, all those things we discuss in the previous lecture. So, in this lecture, we will focus on some practice examples. So, based on the previous discussion, we will try to solve some examples in this particular lecture. Before that, some specific points uh, which are required to practice some examples based on the uh, biogas digestion process. So, if you see here, uh, as I said earlier, we discussed about the classification of biogas plants. So, in that, we discussed about the batch type of biogas plant and then the continuous type biogas plant. So, in the continuous type, it is further subclassified as a floating drum and then the fixed drum type biogas plant. So, followed by that raw material and the availability and the biogas yield. So, this is very important point which need to be considered before starting the designing of a digester or you can say a sizing of the digester as well because the specific gas yield it varies from feedstock to feedstock. So, as a result, if you see the particular slide, there we have tabulated certain different kinds of feedstock and their specific biogas yield. So, there are mainly three types of feedstock which are generally being used for the biodigestion purpose. So, first is animal waste based resources followed by the land based resources and then the water based resources. So, here water based resources means here we mainly talks about the sewage sludge which comes from the waste water treatment plants. So, those types of sewage sludge can also be used for the biodigestion purpose. So, for a specific reason the most widely used feedstock for the biodigestion purpose are also shown here in the table. So, if you just see the list, so among the list the first one is talks about the cow dung that is nothing but called as a cow manure also or the cow waste which is normally being used for the biodigestion purpose and it is called as a gober gas also. So, if you see the production rate as well as the gas yield that is nothing but the biogas yield from this particular source is around this much and this talks about in terms of meter cube per kg of dry matter. Similarly, if you talk about the second, third example also these all waste which are coming from the animal waste category. So, fourth one it mainly talks about the rice husk which is nothing but the agriculture residue these are also being used nowadays for the biodigestion purpose along with some cow waste to balance the C by N ratio as well and followed by microalgae and then the water hyacinth. But then if you see the range of gas production from this particular material it varies. So, it is mainly depends on the feedstock which is used for the biodigestion purpose. So, now based on this if you just try to estimate the volume of digester for a biogas production. So, there are certain facts which need to be considered before we start estimating the volume of the particular digester. So, what are those particular facts? Let us see those particular facts one by one. So, in case if the feedstock is a cow waste. So, as I said if the feedstock is changing accordingly the assumption will also change. There may not be a a huge variation, but there will be a slight variation in the assumption as well. So, in this case we were mainly discussing about the cow waste as a feedstock for the biodigestion purpose. So, in this model also as well as in the examples our main focus will be only on the animal waste which can be used for the biodigestion purpose and to produce a significant amount of biogas. So, in practice around 70 percent of this particular waste can be collected. However, 30 percent is lost into the field due to grazing and then the amount of dry solid if you see in this particular waste it is around 18 percent and remaining is nothing but the moisture content in the waste. So, normally 1 kg of wet waste it is mixed with the 1 kg of water to get the slurry because by doing so we can maintain the solid content in the range of say like for 9 to 10 percent. So, to do that we need to add equal amount of water in this particular dry solid. So, that it can convert it into a 9 to 10 percent of the 
solid contained in the slurry. Similarly, as mentioned here, previous table also. So, 1 kg of dry waste, it gives around 0.3 meter cube of gas per kg of dry solid. So, here our main focus as I mentioned, it is on the cow waste. That is why we have considered this particular amount here. And if the gas requirement and the duration of batch are known, so then in that case, the amount of water and the waste needed can also be calculated very easily to just find out the sizing of the digestion chamber. And the volume of the digester is just equivalent to the volume of the slurry which is required for the biogas production. Therefore, to store the gas, a gas space of around like 10 percent of this volume could be provided in the digester. Of this volume means the volume of the either slurry or the volume of the digester. So, 10 percent of the volume of the digester or 10 percent of the volume of the slurry is to be provided to store the gas inside the digester itself. And hence, the total volume of the digester it can be 1.1 times the volume of the slurry or the volume of the digester. So, these are certain facts which need to be considered before you start sizing the digester. Now, before we touch upon the real designing of the particular digester, we need to consider into the two particular aspect of the process. That means, as I mentioned, this particular process is carried out using two different practices like wet fermentation and the dry fermentation. If you just try to see the difference between these two processes that is wet fermentation and the dry fermentation as well as the parameter which affect this particular process. So, while analyzing this process itself, one can make sure that how to design a particular digester based on this particular process parameter itself. So, now if you see here the parameter which are required for the specific process or which differentiate between these two particular process are nothing but total solid concentration. So, as I mentioned earlier also, the weight fermentation process, it requires around 7 to 9 or 9 to 10 percent of the solid content into the digester for its easy operation. Whereas, in case of dry fermentation, if you see here, the solid content can go up to even like 25 to 30 percent. So, because that is why it is called as a dry fermentation technique. Here, in the weight fermentation, to maintain this particular solid concentration, certain amount of water it need to be added into the digester. So, for that reason what we do is like normally equal amount of water is added so that we can bring down the solid content to around this particular range. Whereas, here the amount of water is kept to its minimum value just for the active fermentation because this is a dry fermentation technique. Similarly, the scum formation and the flotation, yes the problem of scum formation as well as the flotation on the surface of slurry will occur in this particular process that is called as a wet fermentation because here the material is in the slurry form, but that particular problem may not be encountered in the dry fermentation because it is mostly a dry solid. So, as a result there is no formation of any scum or on the surface of the slurry as well because there is no slurry at, at all in this particular process. So, the acid accumulation and the entrapment of the gas less likely to occur in this particular process because as this is a slurry. So, the acid accumulation will not happen in this particular case, moreover the entrapment of the gas also will not happen here. But in this case, it is most likely to occur because as this is a solid fermentation, so the acid which are being formed in the specific zone will remain there only, it will not get uh, distributed in the entire digester. Similarly, you can say the entrapment of the gas, yes it is more likely to occur because wherever the fermentation is happening, the gas will get trapped here. and as there are certain solid particles are there above that particular zone. So, it will not allow the gas to release very easily from the digestion chamber. Apart from that, the problem of pH regulation, movement of material and non-uniform culture. That problem will not be there in the wet fermentation because as it is mostly a slurry. So, this particular movement of substrate will happen easily in this particular process. pH regulation will be very effective in this particular case and non-uniform culture also will not happen. Whereas in this particular case, those problems may be encountered in the dry fermentation technique because as once the solids are getting deposited there, so the acid formation will take place and the acid will accumulate in the specific zone only. As a result, certain bacteria will be active in the specific zone, whereas in the 
other part of the digester the activity will not be that much. So, those kind of irregularities will be happening in the dry fermentation. So, that is the reason the wet fermentation technique is the most widely used technique for the biodization of the waste by designing a specific size of the digester. So, now based on all these understanding we just try to find out the sizing of the digester. So, how to do that? So, before we start uh, the designing of a digester, so we need to follow certain approximate rules for sizing a biogas plant or you can say for estimating their performance. So, what are those particular rules? See for example, if the energy available from a specific digester, if you need to calculate, it can be calculated in terms of like this efficiency of the combustion process or maybe the efficiency of the burning process also then heat of combustion of a volume of a gas and then Vb is the volume of a biogas which is being used. If you just multiply this quantity, so you can easily get the energy which is available from the biogas digester that means the specifically biogas which is coming out from the digester. So, this is in terms of the biogas means here we are not talking about the exact composition which is there in the biogas, whatever the biogas which is coming out from the digester which is directly being used for the combustion purposes or for burning purposes and based on that the energy available from the particular gas has been calculated. But now what happened in this case is since biogas is mainly consist of the methane and the CO2. So, due to this what happens is like some amount of heat of combustion of the methane it goes waste in the heating of CO2 in the biogas. So, as a result what happens is like that amount of energy is not available or in the other sense if I would say the net effect of the energy it is getting decreased because of the some amount of loss of energy in the heating of CO2 only. So, on those particular aspect if you just try to find out the net energy from the specific gas then it can be calculated in the terms of again it is the efficiency of the combustion process then the this qm it indicates the heat of combustion of only the methane because here if you see this is heat of combustion of the biogas that's why we have specified it as a qb but when q suffix m if it is mentioned then it is nothing but the heat of combustion of the methane and then this factor represent here the fraction of methane in the biogas because as the fraction of methane it may vary from feedstock to the feedstock so accordingly this particular fraction will also vary in the calculation and then followed by the volume of a biogas. So, this is also the same amount which is represented in the previous equation also, but these three terms out of this the efficiency also is going to remain same only these two terms are nothing but talks about the methane and its combustion and the presence of methane in the specific composition of the biogas. So, with the help of that we can calculate the net energy which is available from the combustion of the specific gas. So, once we have this particular that is why I mentioned the QM is the heat of combustion of the methane which is normal in the range of this you may find certain other values also in the literature may be up to like a 32 or something like that. So, there are certain representation changes it is all depends on the combustion of methane with CO2 or without CO2. So, this is the value which is we have referred in this particular uh, designing purposes and the FM is nothing but the fraction of methane in the biogas it is also varying between 50 to 70 percent as I mentioned. So, once this will vary accordingly the above value will also vary in the combustion process. So, 50 to 70 we have considered this as a range. So, when you will be solving any specific example there will specifically mention the FM value. So, accordingly you can calculate the energy content in the specific gas. So, the volume of the biogas can be calculated in the very simple way using this particular equation where this C is the biogas yield per unit dry mass of a whole input. So, it is in this particular range. So, we will be considering this particular value also for the designing purpose and M naught it represents the mass of the dry input. So, this also can be calculated on the per day basis once you know the total volume of the slurry or the mass which is input to the digester. So, based on that we can calculate also on per day basis how much feedstock has been entered into the digester and then the volume of the fluid in the digester can be calculated very easily by using the mass divided by the 
density of that particular dry matter in the fluid. So, this value is 50 kg per meter cube, but then you just try to see this particular term here very carefully. This is the density of the dry matter in the fluid and this is not the density of the slurry. Whereas, whenever it is mentioned that density of the dry matter and the density of the slurry accordingly you need to calculate the specific answer because the density of slurry is 1090 kg per meter cube because that will be mostly discussing about the wet fermentation process. But here as the design has been done mostly considering the dry matter in the fluid. So, the density of the dry matter is 50 kg per meter cube. So, accordingly the volume of the fluid also will change and then according to that the size also will change for the digester. And then once you know this V f then it is very easy to calculate the volume of the digester because then it is nothing but the V f is nothing but the volume of the fluid which is entering into the digester or you can say the total input of the volume of the fluid into the digester and if you just multiply by the retention time to it that is nothing but the T suffix r is nothing but the retention time. So, this particular value also will change based on the feedstock. So, it is in the range of say for example, 20 to 40 days. So, accordingly this value will also change and then based on that the volume of the digester also will change. For example, if I consider here the retention time is 20 days. So, accordingly this volume will change, but if I make it 30 days. So, obviously, there will be a slight variation in the biodigester sizing and V f it is the flow rate of digester fluid as I mentioned. So, how much amount of fluid is entering inside the digester per day or the total fluid which has entered into the digester based on that you can calculate the volume of the digester as well. So, once we know this particular thing we can easily calculate the digester size, but as I mentioned there are certain facts which need to be known before you start sizing the digester in terms of like some specific quantity which are required and we already mentioned those values here in the slides. Similarly, we will also try to specify this specific value in the practice example as well. So, based on those example and the values mentioned in that example only you have to solve the problem not like considering this particular values because this is we have considered mostly based on the cow manure. So, if I change suppose the example from cow manure to sheep manure or maybe you can say the piggery manure. So, accordingly there will be a slight variation in this value particular value will happen. So, if you just try to solve one simple example in today's lecture about the sizing of a biogas plant. So, this is the first example and you can see here the statement of the example is also mentioned. So, in this case this is a family size biogas plant this need to be constructed and it is suitable for dry input of mass of 10 kg per day. That means, the dry input value is specified in this particular example that this much amount of dry material is fed inside the digester per day and the retention time is mentioned as 30 days. The temperature of the digester is 30 degree C and the biogas yield in this case is 0.34 meter cube per kg. So, again in this case the example is considered as a cow waste. The burner efficiency is 60 percent that means, if you remember the formula. So, the efficiency of the burning is considered as a 60 percent the fraction of methane F m is 0.7. So, here we have not given any range it is a specific value which we have mentioned because if it is a cow manure we have mentioned that okay, 70 percent of the biogas will come out from the particular digester if the cow waste is being used as a raw material. And then the heat of combustion of methane we have given a specific value here. So, this particular value only you have to use for the calculation purpose and density of dry matter is 50 kg per meter cube. So, now based on this given data we have to estimate the volume of biogas plant and the power available from the plant. So, now with the help of this given data just try to see the equations which I have discussed in the previous lecture using those equations and this value we can easily find out the volume of the digester. So, to do that if you remember first we need to find out the volume of fluid by using a specific equation. Why? Because already the dry matter input value is given here. So, based on that you can easily calculate the volume of a fluid in a digester because M naught which represents the
dry mass input into the digester and here this particular value it represents the density of the dry matter. So, as I mentioned here the density of dry matter is already given. So, if you just divide 10 by this 50 we can this Vf in terms of 0.2 meter cube per day. So, this is very simple. So, Vf is the amount of fluid is entering in the digester on daily basis. So, once we know the Vf value with the help of Vf we can also calculate the volume of digester. So, it is represented as V suffix D. So, how to get this value? As we know the volume of fluid per day injected inside the digester is this much and the retention time is also known. So, if you just multiply these two quantities, you will get this much amount of size of the digester that is 6 meter cube is nothing but the volume of the digester you can say or the size of the digester. So, once we know the size then with the help of size now we can calculate the amount of biogas which is getting generated inside this particular digester that is V suffix B that is nothing but the volume of a biogas. So, it is C into M naught. So, C is nothing but 0.3 kg per meter cube and M naught is already known. So, if you multiply this, so because this is the gas which is generated from per kg of dry matter which is fed inside the digester and we are feeding around 10 kg per day. So, that means this much amount of gas is getting generated per day inside this particular digester. Now, once we know the volume of the biogas as well, the volume of digester, then we can easily calculate the power available from that particular digester. As I mentioned in the previous slide as well that the energy available or the power available can be calculated very easily because we know the combustion or the burning efficiency of the gas, then the methane its calorific value and the combustion value is also given. The fractional composition of methane in the biogas is also given followed by the volume of the biogas. So, as this particular value is 0 0.6, this is 29 and its fraction is 70 percent and then this is the amount of biogas which is generating per day. So, we just multiply this value, we get this much amount of heat of combustion of the specific gas in the process. So, this is the amount of heat which is getting generated. Now, if you just convert this value in terms of watt or kilowatt, there are slight just conversion we need to do because 1 mega joule is nothing but equal to 0 0.28 kilowatt hour. So, that is why we have just converted this value here in terms of kilowatt hour per day and then if you again convert this into a watt. So, simply you just divide this per day basis value to a hour basis value and you will get the value in terms of 482.4 watt. This is the continuous thermal power which will be available from this particular digester. So, this is how the energy or you can say the power available from the specific digester also can be calculated. So, this is very simple example where we are just doing certain calculation using the some specific value for the specific feedstock. So, based on this feedstock now suppose if I change this particular feedstock from common manual to a pigree manual. So, in that case maybe this particular value of volume of the biogas it may change based on the gas yield from that specific feedstock. So, those slight variation will be there in some examples. So, this kind of examples will be given to you in the assignment as well. So, which you can easily do. So, based on that only we will design the assignment problem as well. So, this is how is about the sizing of the digester. Now, if I just take a another example which is just opposite to the one which we have discussed earlier. Why? Because the earlier example in that case we mostly discuss about the density of the dry matter which is input to the digester. So, here we will just try to have slight deviation in the specific example. So, the statement of the problem here if you see it is a community type biogas plant which is to be designed for the cooking and the lighting need of a village which is consistent around like 50 families. And the quantity of waste which is fed to the digester it is also given here it is now 850 kg. So, this is the quantity which is again the example if you see here it is the cow waste which you have considered 
and then the retention time here is 35 days. Now, the density of the slurry is mentioned here instead of the density of the dry matter. So, in this case now the process is carried out in terms of the wet fermentation technique and the calculation need to be done to find out the minimum working volume of a digester and also calculate the actual volume of digester which should be 10 percent more to provide certain head space to store the gas inside the digester as we already discussed before and considering this actual volume calculate the height and diameter of the digester. This is very easy example here also the most of the data is given. So, based on the data only we need to calculate the volume of the digester and also the actual volume of the digester and based on the actual volume only calculate the height and diameter of the digester. So, now if you see in this case the amount of dry solid content in the waste as this is a cow manure it is 18 percent. So, now we need to reduce this 18 percent to suppose 9 percent. So, what need to be done in that case is like we need to add equal amount of water to this particular waste so that the 18 percent solid content will get converted into a 9 percent solid content. So, what is to be done in that case is the the quantity of waste waste which is fed to the digester each day it is given here it is nothing but 850 850 kilogram so now as this is the quantity of waste which is fed inside the digester. So, in this 850 there is a 18 percent of the solid content or you can say the dry solid content is 18 percent. So, we have to bring down this 18 percent to a 9 percent value. So, what need to be done in that case is like so this will be mixed with equal quantity of water to make the slurry. So, if you just add equal amount of water to it, so what will happen in that case is for example, the volume of daily charge to the digester is weight of waste plus water divided by density of the slurry. So, now once you know these two quantity, so as we know the weight of the waste is around 850 and if you add equal amount of water that is around 850 again and if you just divide it by the density of the slurry that is 1090. So, what happen in that case is like suppose if you divide it now in this case here it is the density of slurry and it is not the density of the dry matter content that need to be understood very carefully. If you try to solve this equation here, so you will get the value in the form of 1.55 because this is in the kg per meter cube whereas this is kg per day. 
So, if you just try to solve this, you will get the value in the form of 1.55 meter cube per day. So, this is the amount of slurry which is fed inside the digester on daily basis. So, now if you just try to find out the digester So, volume. So, this is the amount of slurry which is fed inside the digester on daily basis and here the retention time is given as 35 days. So, if you just multiply this you will get the value in the form of 1.55. So, this is nothing but the digester volume for the specific slurry because here the values are changing because based on the feedstock and the density of the material which is being considered for the designing purpose. So, here as the density of the slurry is considered and its value is 1090. So, based on that the value is coming like this. So, now once we know the volume of the digester then based on the volume of the digester we can easily calculate the minimum working volume and the actual volume of digester. So, as the minimum working volume that we already calculated in the previous slide that is 54.25. So, now the actual volume is nothing but what it will be just 10 percent of this minimum volume. So, that is considered as a minimum volume and to accumulate the 10 percent of the volume of the gas. So, that is the reason we are considering it is like 1.1 times the volume of the digester. So, it is 1.1 times the minimum working volume of the digester. So, if you just calculate this value it comes around 59.5. 6, 7 meter cube. So, this is what is the actual volume now. Actual volume of the digester, actual volume of the digester. So, now based on this particular volume, if you just try to find out the height and diameter of the digestion chamber that can be also carried out very easily. So, now, now consider the digester shape as cylindrical. So, based on this the height and the height and diameter ratio. So, this is we can represent it as d and here we can represent height as h. So, this particular ratio is taken as unity for only large capacity plant. So, as this is unity, so here we can say that H is equal to D. So, now once we know the actual volume of the digester, so volume equal to so, if you are considering this as a cylindrical shape, so the height and diameter ratio is considered as a unity in that case when the large capacity plant is to be designed. So, in that case if H is equal to D as we know the volume of the digester, so simply we can calculate it based on the 
pi by 4 this is area into height of the digester. So, now once we know the volume because the volume is known. So, d is equal to h. So, h cube equal to pi by 4 because d is equal to h in that particular case. So, that is why h d is equal to h square h square into h is equal to h cube and then volume upon pi by 4. So, we know the volume it is 59.67 divided by here is if you calculate this value it is 0 0.785. So, now if you just try to get this value here. So, the h value is h value is equal to 4.23 meter similarly as h is equal to d. So, the d is also equal to 4.23 meter. So, accordingly we can calculate the h and d also for the specific kind of a digestion chamber because as I mentioned this is mainly considered for the large capacity size biogas plant where h is considered as equal to the d and then you can calculate very easily the h and d also. So, this kind of examples will be given in the assignment based on the different feedstock to you to solve. So, I guess these are very simple examples to follow. So, that is all about this today's lecture. So, in the next lecture we will also try to solve some more examples. So, about this particular lecture if you have any queries you just feel free to contact me at the email id which is shown here in the specific slide. Thank you.